Good morning. Good morning. Today is hmm, I can't even see. Okay, today is Tuesday the 24th. And we're going to start with a daily reflection on the New Testament. My eyes will not focus. Okay. For they, being ignorant of God's righteousness, are going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. Romans chapter 10, verses 3 through 4. Like all true ministers of Christ, Paul wanted to save souls, but he knew that zeal without correct knowledge and understanding does not save. Even when sincere belief, even when sincere, belief in falsehood can lead to, cannot lead to salvation. Seeking our own course or worshiping false gods, including the false god of self-aggrandizement, leads to dead ends of discouragement, despair, and deception. In our day, the fullness of salvation comes through the new and everlasting gospel covenant as revealed and administered through Joseph Smith and Latter-day Prophets. The law given to Israel has an end in Christ, and salvation is available for all those who have a broken heart and a contrite spirit, and unto none else can the ends of the law be answered. Eternal life is in Jesus Christ and is obtainable only by those who humbly follow him. Okay. Today is 1 Timothy chapters 3 and 4. Chapter 3, it talks about, you know, who's qualified to be a bishop and a deacon. Um, I have no thoughts, no comments, no personal statement from that one. Um, but chapter four, Paul describes the latter day apostasy. Christ is the savior of all men, especially those who believe mm, for, for my personal statement, I chose verse 15, meditate upon these things, give thyself wholly to them that thy profiting may appear to all. And my statement is. I must try harder to meditate on the gospel and my studying throughout the day. Sometimes it's it's like I have this moment in the morning where I do my studying and then I turn the camera off and I go upstairs and then the rest of the day is work and stress and the kids and, you know. So I want to try harder throughout the day too meditate upon these things to remember my personal statement to take it with me throughout the day and to give myself wholly to it like it says here in the in the verse so that's my personal statement for today we could get into the verse by verse now all right for chapter three verse one some Mm, I can't say this word. Uh, F-A-C-E-T-I-O-U-S-L-Y. I'm not even going to try to pronounce it. Said that the King James Verge, Version left out the critical word, If a man desire the office of a bishop, he desireth a good work out. 2 through 7, this passage lists the first century qualifications for being a bishop. The title bishop derives from the Greek episcopos, epi, which means over, as in the epicenter of an earthquake or the spot over which the quake centers, and scopos meaning look or watch. Therefore, an episcopos or bishop 
is one who watches over the flock as an overseer or supervisor. The Episcopalian denomination is so named because of its emphasis on bishops. There you go. Um, for verse two, the husband of one wife means not practicing polygamy, but being absolutely faithful to his one spouse. Verse three, not, not greedy, a filthy lucre. Elder Spencer W. Kimball commented, a fee, I feel strongly that men who accept wages or salaries and do not give commensurate time, energy, devotion, and service are receiving money that is not clean. For verse 4, any abuse of wife or child would disqualify a man from leadership in the Lord's church. Verse 5, a bishop must be a good father to his own children, for he becomes a father to an entire congregation. Verse 8, other officers such as deacons are also described. We believe in the same organization that existed in the primitive church. Verse 12, in Paul's day, the office of deacon carried different responsibilities. In addition, the deacons were often older and married. Verse 15, note the change of emphasis given by the Joseph Smith translation. I don't have it here. Okay, chapter 4. Chapter 4, verse 1. In the latter times, each dispensation has its latter days. The prophecy applies to both his day and ours. Verse 2, search seared with a hot iron, a loss of sensitivity for doctrine and for others' feelings will burn the apostate's consciousness. Verse 3, the number one problem listed was forbidding to marry, a problem for Gnostics back then and for some in modern times too. Marriage to be sure, is part of the heart and the soul of the gospel. If there is no marriage, there is no fulfillment of God's work and glory, the immortality and eternal life of each of us. We are exalted only as couples. Holding my tongue. Verses 12 through 16, Paul gives personal counsel for each of us. Verse 12, let no man despise thy youth. Nephi was a young man too. Jesus was only 12 when he, <clears throat> when he confounded the learned doctors. Joseph Smith was only 14 when he walked out of the sacred grove with monumental and marvelous truths. Verse 14, we believe that a man must be called of God by prophecy and by the laying on of hands by those who are in authority to preach the gospel and administer in the ordinances thereof. A line of authority was just as important in the early church as it is now. Also, what was the gift Paul referred to? Was it the Holy Ghost or Timothy's priesthood stewardship? Modern revelation teaches that to every man is given a gift by the Spirit of God, but to leaders is given the ability to discern all those gifts for the benefit of the church. Okay. Uh. I got nothing. I got nothing extra. I thought it was a good, I thought chapter four was good. Um, yeah. For some reason, Timothy seems to be more understandable than the rest of it was. Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians. I think Thessalonians was okay. But like, his Romans, the first part was super confusing. And uh, Timothy's not bad. I'm enjoying Timothy. So, I'll leave you now with a prayer from a diary of prayer. It is the 24th. And, oh, and this is anonymous, but it's before the 8th century. And it's office him for complying. Before the ending of the day, creator of the world, we pray that with thy wanted favor thou wouldst be our guard and keeper now. 
from all ills from all ill dreams defend our eyes from mighty fears and fantasies tread underfoot our ghostly foe that no pollution we may know O father that we ask be done through jesus christ thine only son who with the holy ghost and thee doth live and reign eternally all right that was first timothy chapters three and four and tomorrow we do five and six And we will see you then. Oh, also, I'm sending out the journals and the prizes today. I sent out two yesterday, um, but the others I forgot something to put in there. Also, there's a typo on... There's a typo on the schedule. It's near the end of the year. I could go in and I could fix it, but... I, I had no energy to do so yesterday, so we'll just, we'll fix it when it comes, okay? We'll fix it when it comes. It's one small typo. Easy fix. We'll get to it. Okay. I love you all. Have a great day.